Greetings and welcome to another impressions video here at Words About Games and today we're going to be looking at Necromunda Underhive Wars. Necromunda Underhive Wars is a tactical strategy game set in a spin-off from the Warhammer 40k universe. Below the polluted hive city of Necromunda lies the Underhive, a place of dark twisting tunnels home to bitter and unending gang warfare. In Underhive Wars you'll lead your own gang through a series of persistent game modes or take control of other gangs in the game's campaign. I really tried with Underhive Wars. I really did. I was a big fan of the original tabletop game that this game is based on, playing it a bunch back in the 2000s. I love that it took the Warhammer game mechanics but put them down to a smaller scale, gang warfare rather than gigantic army battles. Plus it was grungy and cyberpunk and punk rock and all the things I was looking for in a tabletop strategy game. Necromunda was my jam. Underhive Wars, however, isn't. I've given up on making my way through much more of the game due to the sheer volume of crashes I've experienced. During play, the game performs reasonably well. There's some frame rate stuttering during cutscenes, but apart from that, the game functions fine from a technical standpoint, except that it crashes all the time, often taking Steam and OBS, until I stopped trying to capture footage to see if that was the problem, spoiler alert, it wasn't, with it in the process. Luckily the game has a really robust autosave which basically checkpoints you after each and every turn so minuscule amounts of progress were lost in the process. But eventually I quickly grew tired of the constant dance of crash, restart, play, crash, restart, play and I've just given up. Because while I could maybe have gritted my teeth through having to restart the game every like half an hour or so, Underhive was simply isn't worth the hassle. So I've played a bit of the campaign and run a couple of missions with my own custom gang. The game was insistent that I go through the story before creating my own gang and experiencing the rest of the game, and I initially agreed since the campaign would theoretically teach me how to play the game. I made it through about four chapters before the game's constant crashing finally just sucked my will to play. Underhive Wars is a very dull game to play. It's slow paced in the worst way. Time to kill is absolutely massive, and the weapons you've equipped feel like they're doing sod all damage. Everything feels like it takes far too long to happen, even just movement. Underhive Wars is a game that could benefit from moving at a snappier pace. Each round is broken down into turns. Every turn you select one of your characters and your enemy does the same. Whichever of the two characters has the highest initiative moves first. You watch your opponent move, then you move your character, or vice versa. You've actually got an impressive amount of options. Each character has AP, which are action points, and MP, which are movement points, used to do things or move around. Different character classes and equipped weapons allow characters to perform different actions, aside from the basics of moving and attacking. Brawlers, for example, can use a skill called Death from Above to land on enemies below and stun them before moving in for the kill. Lay mechanics can interact with the environmental objects to either sabotage them and create traps or destroy them to hamper enemy movement, such as cutting zip lines to limit enemy mobility. There's also a big spread of different types of weapons drawn from the Warhammer 40k universe. You've got a variety of different melee weapons, pistols, rifles, special weapons, and spread weapons, which are like flamethrowers. Between the different character classes and weapons, there are so many different options at your fingertips that there's probably a pretty engaging strategy game buried somewhere. And that place is far away from the main campaign, where you jump in at starting your own gang. When you create your own gang, you hire new gang members, customising their class and appearance, before sending them out on missions called Operations. You choose an operation on the map, and try to complete as many of its objectives as you can, usually with a rival gang trying to do the same thing. You fight, then head back to base with your spoils, or not, and spend your XP on levelling your characters up and your cash on new gear and equipment. It's actually a decently satisfying gameplay loop. It doesn't fix any of the pacing issues that the core gameplay has, but it feels like the piece of the game that was missing during the campaign. Being able to direct the growth and evolution of your own gang, tailor its members to your specific playstyle, and complete missions with more varied objectives is way more satisfying than whatever the campaign is doing. In fact, I suggest getting through the tutorial and then just bouncing out completely and heading straight for build your own gang. The top issue, however, and the one that kills the game for me, aside from the constant crashes, which I assume will eventually be patched out, is the AI. It's either broken or incredibly badly designed. It's almost like the AI enemies you encounter are playing a different game from the one you're playing. Because of the way turns work, you spend a lot of time watching what the AI is doing, and it quickly becomes clear that they have no real idea what they're doing. I've watched enemies charge into my container, face a wall, activate a skill that exchanges their movement points for extra action points, 
and then use Overwatch while facing said wall. I've watched a big looking enemy with a giant hammer turn his back on my gang members and an ambush. Enemies routinely ignore gang members and run right past them for no discernible reason or tactical advantage. And, especially when combined with the frustratingly dull pace of the game, this does a lot to hamper the experience. Necromunda Under Hive Wars is a game with a lot of potential, but unfortunately a lot of that potential was never really reached. Buried underneath a fairly severe technical issue, terrible enemy AI, a superfluous campaign, and glacially paced gameplay that makes the game feel more like a slog than a deep or satisfying strategy game. There are bright spots, creating and managing a gang can be a rewarding experience, and there's a ton of really cool depth to the combat thanks to the variety of weapons and skills, but it's also not really a game I can recommend, because those bright spots are often quite difficult to even find. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, consider sticking around here at Words About Games. Our content includes review impressions of games big and small, a weekly podcast dedicated to discussing the happenings in and around the games industry, weekly opinion videos, reactions, debate-driven top 5 and top 10 lists, a regular Hall of Fame series where we discuss our favourite games, and indie game spotlights. We also stream every Friday and Saturday at twitch.tv slash wordsaboutgames. Most importantly, have a brilliant day.